Okay, in this video I'm going to show you how to make this hand carved wooden sign. I start out by putting the pattern onto the wood using just carbon paper. I print the pattern onto uh, out of the computer and then transfer it on. Here I'm putting uh, notches in the corners just using a two inch hole saw. And then I put a, a, a small uh, chamfer on the edge of each, uh, each side just to give it a nicer look and a nicer feel when you're handling the sign. Um, now I start off with a profile bit and uh, do the outset letters. And I'll do this in two passes. So I'll uh, take, a, take a pass around at a, about uh, an eighth of an inch deep and uh, get everything uh, cleaned up from there. And once I've done everything at that depth, I'll uh, lower it to about 3 sixteenths to a quarter of an inch, uh, depending on the sign, and make another pass, clean up the edges, and also gives it a lot more depth and really makes those outset letters pop and stand off the background. So I'm only going to show this one, uh, this one word doing the outset, and it's just more of the same from there. Now I'm switching to the 60 degree uh, v-groove bit and I'm going to do some inset letter carving uh, down below and I'm going to do the S, the N, and the Y at a deeper depth to give it a little heavier feel because those letters are a little bit bigger than the other letters. So then I adjust the depth up a little bit and finish carving those. I'm using the Sego script font which I, I think is a pretty easy font to carve and I, I think it looks nice. It's offset from the Clarendon font that I used for the uh, name part of the sign. And uh, I'll usually do these at one pass because it's an easy font and I can get the depth. And so now you can see what it, what it looks like when the letters are all carved. Now I switch back to the profile bit and I'm going to do the artwork from there. I'm going to do uh, multiple depths depending on the part area of the sign. And if you notice at the end of uh, the mountain uh, legs, I lift up on the router to give it a little more of a pointed feel. If I didn't do that, it would have kind of a rounded end on the ends of those mountains. And I want it to be more pointed. So I, I just lift it up as I'm gliding along and to get that pointed effect. Now I'm just going to clean out the background of the mountain. Uh, using the profile bit, I think I went a little bit deeper here uh, just to get more depth and more contrast to make it a little more interesting. And it gives uh, a nice uh, pattern for the mountains themselves. Now I'm going to uh, do the carving around the camper and the trees. Uh, still using the profile bit, I'm going to uh, go all around that, uh, get all of the outline done do all of the uh, other areas of the camper and I'll probably use a couple different depths here get the outline at one depth uh, some of those inside lines are going to be a little bit shallower because uh, they're a little bit tighter a uh, little bit tighter space so I don't want to go as, as deep because the deeper I go the wider the bit so I will uh, avoid doing that and uh, just do that do that clean up um, so you see that I, I am adjusting the depth as I work and to get the uh, get the, the look that I'm I'm going for and what I'm doing here it's a great shot of the back of my hand but I am putting a little white space between the camper and the trees I find that it looks better than putting the trees right up against the outline of the camper. And so that gives me a reminder to do that. And then the very next thing I'm going to do is go around that white space so that I don't forget, which has happened once or twice, and uh, run the trees into the, into the outline. So now I'm, I'm going to go through at a shallow depth and do all a rough pass along the line of the trees and once I do that I will go back and 
put it at a deeper depth, do the clean out. Um, you notice that I, um, excuse me, started each tree running a line down the middle. And I think that just gives it a, a neat look as I do the carving, that line will stay there and just kind of makes it a little more interesting. Whatever you can do to make your, your signs a little more interesting, make uh, things stand out in the background. Uh, a lot of times I take photos after the sign is complete and the photos just don't do it justice. Many times the, the photo just doesn't show the, the detail that goes into the background because that area is all black and um, I'm not a great photographer. So, but when it gets into the hands of the customer, they, they can see that detail and they see that, you know, some extra, extra effort was put into their sign. And uh, now I've switched and I've got the 90 degree V groove bit and I'm doing the, the cloud area of the letter of the name part. Uh, so where it says uh, the and the last name, there's going to be a cloud all the way around that to highlight the off the outset letters. And so I use the 90 degree V groove for that. And that gives a, a really nice um, uh, background. I'll do a clean out as you see here. Um, just working around doing little patterns uh, around the larger areas. Some of the areas are so tight that I can only do like a, a dimple effect where I just uh, lift and, and set the router down. You see it right there. I was doing that. Uh, the other areas are a little bit bigger and I can uh, put a pattern into that. And the 90 degree uh, works really well for that. It, uh, once it's, it's painted and the finish is put on, uh, it looks pretty good. It really stands out and catches the light at different angles and um, gives it a nice look. I have trouble uh, doing all the whole side uh, the whole way around. So you see I spun it around so I can get a get better view of the area that I'm working on. And uh, it just helps me be able to see what I'm working on because of the outset letter. Some of the area is kind of hidden and Here's what it looks like when it's carved. I'll go over this with a brush. I'll use a little uh, a little knife to kind of clean up some areas, some high spots, um, some places that uh, didn't get cleaned out. And then I move on. I have a jig made uh, to get the holes exactly where I want them to be. I usually do a 12 inch spacing uh, so it's centered on the board. And uh, that way, if I want to add a hanger uh, or the customer wants to come back later with a hanger, uh, I know exactly where to put the holes on the new, the next sign and it'll match up with the existing sign. Now I'm getting ready to spray the black and I use here a, uh, just a flat black, uh, spray primer. I think it's, uh, I can't remember exactly. I think it's a, uh, Krylon, uh, might be a Rustle. I think it's Krylon, uh, black primer. And so I'm doing the back of the, the chamfer and now I'll spin it over. I'll do the um, the front along the uh, the edging. And once I've made a trip around the sign that way, um, I try not to get too much on there. I don't want to overspray uh, because it's just more that I have to sand off. Plus, it can bleed through. Um, one thing to note is this is pine. I've already applied sanding sealer to this to help prevent bleeding. But um, if you put too much, you can still have bleeding. So I try to go light and get, area, get all the areas filled in. Then I take it over, start the sanding process. I start out um, with a 40 grit sand, uh, sanding belt and get all of the, the rough stuff done get the black off as much of the area as possible. And once I've gotten a good bit of the black off, I will switch to 80 grit. You see here, I'm cleaning the belt because it will get gummed up if I don't do that. And uh, keeping that clean helps me get a lot more life out of my belt. Um, so here, I'm just about done with the 40 grit. I'll be switching to the 80 grit and finish getting the, the black off 
as well as really smooth up the sign, get all the heavy scratches that the 40 grit put in so that when I switch to the 120 grit will be my final pass with the belt sander. I will have a uh, pretty smooth sign and the 120 will just be to kind of give it a finished look and smooth. All the heavy scratches will already be gone at this point and it's just kind of a, a clean up, make sure that everything is exactly the way it should be. And clean that up a little bit, blow it off. Now I'm going to just with the orbital go over it with 220 real quick. You see I didn't spend a lot of time. What I'm doing here, the the sanding process leaves a lot of little, just little feathers. Uh, not even feathers, it's just a, I don't even know what to call it, but just a very light scrape with uh, the little, uh, little carving tool I have and it cleans it right up and um, gives it a lot more of a crisp look and I don't have to worry about that stuff coming off and later in the process. So this only takes a few minutes for each sign and it really makes a, a difference in the final look. Another blast with the uh, air hose. Put my eye hooks in and I'm going to get ready for finish. Here I am, I'm spraying it. I use a critter uh, siphon sprayer and you can see that there's a lot of overspray with that. I'm wearing a, a respirator to help keep the fumes out um, because if I do enough of these I don't want that much of that stuff in my lungs and um, there's the finished product. Uh, you can see the um, and this was a part of a set so I mentioned the hangers that go below and there it is.